Do you ever get confused with all the different recommendations for protein that you see? Are you confused about how much you need to build muscle mass? In this video, I'm gonna tell you exactly what you need to know about protein and muscle gain. Today, we're gonna to talk all about one of the most important nutrients when it comes to building muscle. That's right, protein. More importantly, I'll tell you how much you should be taking to build muscle mass. We'll also learn something about the maximum amount of protein that you can eat in just one sitting that might just surprise you. I wanna point out that I'm not recommending any particular protein supplements. What I am going to do is talk about how protein works in general and why the amount matters. Let's get started. Let's start off with clearing the air around the recommended daily intake for protein, which is advised by the World Health Organization and most governments. The recommended amount depends on your body weight, because if you're bigger, with more muscle, you'll need a little more to maintain it. Now, in this video, we're going to mention a lot of numbers, but don't worry. I'll explain how to apply them to yourself. When I talk about body weight, I'm talking about people who don't have a large amount of body fat. If you do have a lot of body fat and you calculate your protein intake based on your weight, you may get a very high number. So instead, you can just roughly calculate your healthy or lean weight using your height and a healthy body mass index of 25. The reason I say healthy in air quotes is because your weight doesn't dictate your health, but BMI is a very common used metric and useful for this calculation. So how do we calculate your lean weight? Simply multiply your height in meters squared by 25. So if you're 170 centimeters tall, that's 1.7 meters, and your lean weight is 1.7 squared by 25, which is 72.25 kilograms. This is what I use to calculate protein intake for all of my clients. Now, when I talk about how much protein to take, I'm gonna mention grams per kilogram of body weight. And the World Health Organization, which I mentioned earlier, recommends 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day. How much is that? Well, if you weigh 70 kilos, just multiply your weight by 0.8, and that's how much you should eat. That works out at 56 grams of protein. And I bet a lot of you would eat that in a single meal, right? The reason the recommendation is so low is because it's not a recommendation for muscle gain. It's a recommendation to prevent protein malnutrition, to make sure you don't become deficient in protein. A lot of government recommended nutrient intakes are designed with that in mind, to prevent deficiencies. So they may not be optimal for getting you gains. In reality, most RDIs are perfectly adequate when maintaining health, but when it comes to protein, we can do better. There are two ways we can think about protein intake, and the most common is grams of protein per day. According to a recent meta-analysis by Martin et al, and including researchers like Brad Schoenfeld, Eric Helms, Menno Henselman, James Krieger, and Stu Phillips, 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight seems to offer the maximum benefit for muscle growth. So if you weigh 70 kilograms, that works out at about 112 grams per day. So technically, if you eat more than that, you probably won't see any further increases in muscle mass. Now, a lot of you probably think this sounds really low. It's important to remember that this is just one meta-analysis and isn't necessarily the final word. So before I give any final recommendations, I want to talk about another way of thinking about protein intake. Protein per meal may be a more useful way of looking at protein intake because of something called leucine threshold. Simply put, leucine is an essential amino acid that stimulates muscle protein synthesis, the process we use to build new protein from amino acids. If we get enough leucine in a single meal, we can maximally stimulate MPS, and eating more protein probably won't stimulate it anymore. It turns out that if you eat a mixed meal with about 0.4 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight, that's probably enough to reach leucine threshold and maximally stimulate muscle growth. So if you have four meals with 0.4 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight, that's a total of 1.6 grams per kilogram per day. Bear with me. If four meals are good, maybe more meals could be better. This is where we need to look at what's called mechanistic data or biochemical explanations for how MPS happens. We know that after we maximally stimulate MPS, we have to wait a certain amount of time before we can stimulate it again with more protein. This is called the refractory period, and it lasts about three hours. That means that technically we could stimulate MPS with a dose of protein every three hours or so. Assuming you sleep a solid eight hours, which you should be doing if you want to build muscle, that means you can probably fit in six protein doses, one every three hours, while you're awake. In that case, if you eat 0.4 grams per kilogram at each meal, the total works out at 2.4 grams per kilogram of protein per day. There is some evidence that this much protein can be effective in young bodybuilders, so it's not too much of a reach from the theoretical principles of MPS. So, here are my thoughts on what you could do. 
If you're serious about building muscle, as an absolute minimum, you should be eating 1.6 grams per kilogram per day, spread over four meals of 0.4 grams per kilo. That's as easy as breakfast, lunch, post-workout, and dinner. To be honest, this is probably going to be a very close to optimal strategy. However, if you want to do everything you possibly can to milk every last drop of gains, you could increase that to six meals of 0.4 grams per kilogram each day, which works out at a total of 2.4 grams per kilo. It takes a lot more organization of your eating schedule to space out the meals by about three hours each. Here's what a day's eating schedule might look like. Remember though, there's not a lot of real world evidence that this much protein will make much of a difference. But if you can fit it in, why not try? Personally, I think four meals a day is a good balance between optimizing muscle growth and having an actual life that doesn't revolve around your food schedule. That sweet spot is probably somewhere between 1.6 and 2.4 grams per kilogram per day. Finally, you may have heard somewhere that you can only digest 20 to 25 grams of protein per meal, and any more is a waste of protein. Just like many myths in nutrition, there is a grain of truth to it. We do know that in young, healthy people, about 20 grams of protein per meal is enough to maximally stimulate muscle protein synthesis. Eating twice that amount of protein, 40 grams, won't double your MPS, but it can increase it a little, by another maybe 20% according to some studies. However, that doesn't mean that the rest of the protein is wasted. Yes, some will get oxidized for energy, but can also be used for building other non-muscle tissues in the body or forming hormones, enzymes, and antibodies, which are all protein-based. On top of that, resistance exercise increases the MPS response to protein. So you can stimulate MPS a little more with a higher dose of protein. And that should apply to everyone watching this. So don't worry if you eat more than 25 grams of protein per meal. Your body can digest it and you will use it. Just maybe not all for building muscle. So now that you know how much protein you need to get big, I want to leave you with one last warning. It doesn't matter how much protein you eat if you're not putting in the work in the gym. The stimulus for muscle growth comes from exercise. And if you don't have that stimulus, no amount of protein is going to get you jacked. Train hard. So what do you think? Did that clear up the protein confusion? As always, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and remember to like and subscribe to the My Protein YouTube channel for more great evidence-based nutrition information.